Marvel shirt. <laughs> Next week, perhaps reverse. <laughs> I'm absolutely not cutting that out. Maybe on- Wait a minute, you're not taping that. <laughs> I am so. No. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio <laughs> You're killing me, Goldbeck. Hi, <laughs> 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 everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. He is, in fact, wearing pants. Fully clothed. <laughs> yep. Pants, shirt. No socks. All right. His I mean, feet are naked. We are in Florida, so I would not get service with no shoes. That's true. But I do have a shirt, so I'm pretty close. Flippy floppies are fine. I don't know why they don't specify pants, because there could be some misunderstandings in Florida. I mean, especially here in the Keys. Oh There's dudes God. who don't wear pants. There was a dude that in D.C. who didn't wear pants. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they were sort of pants. He sort of had pants. All right. So, we got a lot to talk about here, Dad. Oh, my goodness. That, uh, this is usually trouble. Am I in trouble? The cocktail of the week is the Hello Kalani cocktail. It's good. Yeah, it's uh, it sounds like it's gonna be tiki. Yeah, I thought it'd be more pineapple. It has lemon juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, um, a little bit of demerara syrup, which is just simple syrup made with demerara sugar, which is kind of like the sugar in the raw that you get in the packets. It's slightly different than that, but mm-hmm. it's basically that. It's in that direction. Yeah, uh, grenadine, a little bit of grenadine, and bourbon yeah. instead of rum. Right. Dash of bitters. It. It tastes a lot like a whiskey sour. Yeah. It's like the the tiny little twist. Like a whiskey sour would basically be the syrup, the bourbon, and the lemon juice. This has a little bit of orange and pineapple juice, but it doesn't actually change the profile that much. It's not like, like, as you said, it's not like a punch. It would be in in the tub thumping song. It'd be a whiskey drink, (laughs) not a tiki drink. They don't have a tiki drink in there. They do in my version. <laughs> a vodka drink and a tiki drink and a bourbon drink and a whiskey drink. We sang that. Drink that reminds me of a, the good times. We did a ukulele version of that. You know the words now. Tiki drink. <laughs> it's not in there. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. Like, okay. We have so much. Uh, you it keep is, saying this. Like anyone's got anywhere to go. <laughs> Uh, uh, look, what I'm saying is the last few weeks we've been like, well, you know, there's not a lot of dog news and that's okay. And now we have a fuckload of dog news plus other stuff. There's many things this week. You're bubbling with excitement. Go well, d- dive just, right in. Let's do D- it. Okay. Dive right in, Jen. <clears throat> dive in. Dive in. All right. Let me start by saying when I was looking at this list earlier today, I was like, we basically have stuff to report for everybody except Vink. And then Vink decided, I'm going to have my skin all over my tum breakout, which is a thing that she does. And it is a thing that she decided to do this she afternoon. She just does it for attention. Yep. So anyway, she's going to the vet tomorrow to get her anti-itch shot, which we are supposed to get her every month. And we just have not been doing quite as often. So Ugh. this month begins a regular every 30 days because I feel bad for her. It's like all broken out belly. It's sad. But, other, I mean, she's fine. But My itchy baby. And she's going to the vet tomorrow. So, that's Fink. All right. <laughs> Things that are not Voods foods. Let's let's go by dog. We're going to have to, the whole list, or this is the latest updates to not Voods These foods. are just the latest updates. Yeah, they are. Uh, uh, <laughs> thing number one that Voodoo ate, we're going in chronological order, your pepper plant. Yes. I I have my suspicions as to why, because I put some coffee grinds around the base of it to keep the slugs away, but it attracted a vood instead. Do you want to share your voodoo coffee theory? Because you have, I think, a three-part theory. Yes. I can't remember what else. He took your coffee travel cup. Yes. I I just left it on the stairs, and he took it. It's like one of these sort of metal ones that, you know, keep the coffee hot or the cold drink cold. And he sniffed it very extensively then knocked it off the stairs and then picked it up in his hole with his like from the side with his (laughs) mouth i didn't it's like he he snaked it like he he unhinged his jaw i mean it's a big mug yeah and he just started carrying it away i think he likes coffee yeah and then he did eat the coffee grounds i will remember the other thing too so thing number two that vudo ate so we have i like to call it a citrus grove 
Yeah. It's, it's, a grove, it's a little grand grove. It's a little grand for what we have. It's four citrus trees. No. Um, we had two key limes, a lemon and a blood orange. And uh, our all of our citrus trees got attacked by some sort of insect over the winter. Um, really small insects. So you can see their traces, but not the... Yeah, just kind of the, the egg sacs left. Yeah. Uh, one of the key lime trees bit it. Uh, everything else was in very bad shape, and we kind of managed <laughs> with some aggressive treatment to kill one round of the bugs enough for the plants to basically get a new set of leaves coming, and that was okay. But the bugs started coming back, and so I posted on Nextdoor, which is always an iffy proposition. Um, but there are a lot of people down here who know about plants. There's also a lot of people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. But we did get some good advice to try organicide, which is uh, an organic... It's it's actually just oil. It sounds terrible, so but it's, it's actually not as bad as it sounds. sesame oil, fish oil. It, it's like safe for bees. It's like a gloopy, oily stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and you spray it on the trees, and it kills the bugs. No, you dilute it and spray it on yes, the trees, yes. and it kills bugs. <laughs> That's a yes. very good point. Um, so, you know, we obviously love the bees as former keepers of bees and, uh, you know, don't want to be. And the, the other thing that someone had recommended is seven, which is a uh, bug-killing thing that everybody keeps thinking is illegal because <laughs> it's... <laughs> That's it's not a illegal, bad sign. <laughs> but uh, it, I mean, it kills bees. It kills kind of everything. It's toxic to fish. You're not supposed to use it where there's runoff, which like literally where we live is a place that everything runs off into the ocean. So uh, organicide is what was recommended. And Jared had actually bought neem oil, which is another one of these sprays. It's like a, a variation on Oily the organicide. Thing, yeah. um, an insecticidal soap. These are all these kind of natural things that will kill the bugs that eat your plants but are are safe including for stuff that you're going to eat yeah so we went to home depot we bought a bottle of concentrate organicide and you put whatever like a we got a hand sprayer and you it's like a half like gallon, half gallon yeah. hand sprayer mm-hmm. and you put an ounce and a half of the organicide in there so it's pretty concentrated stuff sesame oil fish oil are the main two ingredients in it so you can tell this story because it's your story yeah, I just, I started spraying the, I, st- I like had the dogs out. I brought all the dogs inside and dried them all off and then started spraying the tree and, you know, refilled it a few times and put the, put the oil container. It's kind of like the size of a, well, a little smaller than an oil container for, yeah, for a car. Same. Like it's yeah. eight, eight or 12 ounces or something. Yeah. So I put it down, you know, on the porch and I'm spraying, and I turn around and I see Voods, who'd been sleeping, you know, between the cars or something, uh, like apparently eating rocks. And I was like, "Oh, that's interesting. He's now he's eating rocks." I'll come over and tell him it's not Voods' foods. And he had bitten the top off the c- container; it had spilled, and he was kind of lying on it, licking the stuff oh. off the rock. So I have no idea how much he ingested, because a lot of it just soaked right into the ground. But I, I was um, swimming, so I get was, back and... Yeah, and there was still some in the container. Yeah. And so I Google it, you know, immediately. And I'm like, and they're like, well, it's safe. It's probably fine. It's, you know, you don't have to... It's not poisonous. It's organic and all this. And I was like, this <laughs> is not... That's for like eating a lemon that's been treated or something. <laughs> yeah, so I get back from my swim, <clears throat> which is where I was when this is all happening. I get in the shower outside, and Jared Dad's like, Jen, I need your help. And I was like, do you need my help right now? Like, I have a handful of shampoo I am about to put on my head. And he's like, yes, right now. And yes, I'm like, I have a bottle of uh-oh. hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> and he's like, Vood's ate the organicide. So, we, uh, so if you have a dog the size of a Vood, make them drink a quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide. We just held his head up and dumped it in his throat. Um, and then it takes like 10 to 15 minutes, and that'll make them vomit. If that, if that doesn't work, do it one more time. Um, with anything that they can puke up. So if they eat chocolate, anything, yeah. you know, not spiky if they eat. But you know. raisins or chocolate or something that, that yeah. the dogs shouldn't eat. Hydrogen yeah. peroxide. We always have a bunch on hand just in case. And well, for blood and for dogs. It, it cleans up blood and it will make your dog puke. And uh, so we did that and we got <laughs> this like foamy, oily, nasty. He, 
Anyway, he puked it up. He's fine. Uh, he still smells a little bit like fish oil, even he, though he's had a bath. And he's returned to that spot every day since, and he's like dug down to where it's soaked into the ground. Where so, he puked on the ground. No, no, this is where the oil spills. Oh, but also. Well, where he that's on the also ground. true. Where he, yes, he's he's returned to the scenes of the crimes. The, he's unfazed by throwing <sighs> up. He did not learn a thing. No. He thought it was interesting. <laughs> What an idiot that dog and is. And the, the fish oil smell is nasty. It is like the fish oil that you get medicinally, except his paws and his mouth smell like it. Yeah, and it's like a quart of it. So Ugh. we have learned an important lesson about keeping... Um, He's a sneaky devil is Poisons what he is. off the ground. He's a sneaky devil. Okay, so CB also had to go to the vet. There's because- another list. I mean, the list goes on, right? He's discovered Kleenexes now. We've talked about this. We have, okay. You, I, you'd better have an exciting story, dear dad, because there's a lot of exciting content to come, so I need a good tale. I withdraw my, okay. my discussion of nothing, of, of <clears throat> anything but what's your exciting news you're going to have. As I was saying... A good tale, nice one. <laughs> Go on. Chief Brody uh, has been having some problem where he would like make these kind of sniff, snarf sounds... Very, he'd get very distressed. He'd start shivering and start shaking and take these big kind of snarfing breaths in. And he was doing this a couple of days ago, I guess Sunday. Is that right? It Friday. Yeah. And then overnight on Friday. And then he threw up overnight on Friday. Right. And was doing it a lot. That's what it was. Middle on of the Saturday night. morning. Middle of the night. Yeah. So we took him up to the vet all worried. And she's like, well, you know, they checked everything. He's okay. There's nothing in there. He, blood works fine. Um, and the vet was basically like, no idea what to do for him. And he did it at the vet. I mean, I brought, I yeah. took video, which is always a good idea if they're doing a weird thing to bring video because you know they're not going to do it at the vet. Except he did it for the tech. He did it for the vet. So they saw it. And they're like, don't know. <laughs> He's a weird guy. We don't know what to do for this. Uh, she's like, I guess we could try giving you this kind of drop you could put in his nose and like that, you know, maybe if it's an allergy thing. And so I was like, okay. So we got home. I was like, I'll give it the drop tonight. Fine. After he, going to the vet. He's discovered he's fine. He's fine. He's decided it was not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what the heck that was? Our vet is an hour away. <clears throat> we'll get, we'll for- get to why this is relevant to Jer Dad, but don't, don't jump my order here, Jer Dad. We'll get there. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yes, Doc. <laughs> I was reminded uh, from CV Snarfs of the time that Queso couldn't stop sneezing. Just sneeze and then sneeze and then sneeze. And I called the vet and I was like, she won't stop sneezing. All she does is sneeze and then sneeze again. And they're like, okay, bring her up. And I was getting ready to get her in the car. And I look at her and at the tiny edge of her nose, there's this teeny tiny little green speck. And I grabbed it and it was like an eight inch long blade of grass that was stuck in her sinuses. And I pulled the whole blade out of her nose and Did then she was fine. Come out of her ear on the other end. It seems like that's <laughs> that far. Um, okay. So so maybe he had a th- just a little thing stuck in there, like it a could, seed or something. It could something. have been trying to clear his throat. Yeah. He's fine. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let's 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 talk about guac. Guac number one. Guac tried to murder me again. <laughs> he did. He, well, you were carrying food and he wanted that I food. was bringing Voodoo's foods into the bedroom. And Voods was not going into the bedroom because someone will not feed him in his designated spot. And so he gets confused and is like, do I go in the bedroom? Do I walk into the kitchen? Maybe I should just stand here. Where... When I have him alone for a while, he learns to go in the bedroom like a good dog who knows where he's supposed to eat. Our dad. I, you know, I, I don't know who, <laughs> who this person would be who's not feeding him there. So, Voods is being like, what am I supposed to do? I'm very confused. And Guac's like, I'm going to stand between you and Voods. And so I finally like, Voods, go in the bedroom. Voods like, okay. And I'm like trying to walk and Guac's like, well, I'm not moving from here. And he tripped me and I fell over him. I still have a rug burn on my knee. I did not spill Voods foods though on the way down. That's, that was that is really impressive. Thank you. I am and, very impressive. And Guac was waiting for you to spill some food, but was disappointed. Mm-hmm. He sure was. I just yelled at him. I didn't yell at him. I was like, "What the heck?" He's like, "Can I have my dinner now?" I mean, what's up, with this lady? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quit falling around here. Uh, and then uh, yesterday I went up to Maryland, and today I was in Maryland, and now I am back in Florida. It was a very quick trip, but I called Jared Dad this morning. And I was like, dear dad, how's it going? And he's like, not good. Ah! You want to tell me, tell, tell everybody this story of guac this morning? Yeah, we were out swimming. Everyone was out there, you know, 
chasing the ball if you're guac and chasing guac if you're hops and looking at fish if you're hops and then everyone else was swimming and then I took I took the opportunity to shower three dogs with the hose and then guac comes out of the water and is kind of if he were human you'd be doubled over he just was mm-hmm. kind of all tense and like crampy looking and uncomfortable and then he kind of slunk away away from the water which is very unlike him because the ball was yes. still in the water hop still had the ball and then he just kind of went to the perimeter of of our yard and i brought the other dogs all in and guac was like missing so i went back down and i opened the car door i got the treat bag i was calling him i couldn't i didn't know where he was and he was like hiding not hiding he was lying down in the areca palms that we have by the fence just like lying there Mm -hmm. kind of i don't want to say he wasn't responding to the treats or being called. And so I walked over there and he just didn't want to get up and was kind of lethargic, which is very unlike the guac. Um, so I basically picked him up, threw him in the car yeah, and went to the vet and started calling, you know, called the vet from, from the car and said, this is what's happening. He's acting really weird. And they're like, well, bring him in. We'll take a look and, you know, then we'll fix him up. But it was a 40 minute drive. So I, had him in the car all the way in the back, so I couldn't see him for 40 like, minutes. Is he it was, dead? Is it he was dead? terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. I mean, skip to the end. He's fine. <laughs> he got out of the... I mean, you had to take him out of the car at the vet. Yeah, he didn't want to hop out of the car the way he usually does. He was less bouncy. But as soon as we got into the vet waiting room, he's just going around, licking people, all happy, wags. He's They've, fine. He decided he's fine. They have the crash cart ready. Basically, yeah, they had everything like ready for him having a punctured lung or or a heart attack or drown or something, right? They they're like, is yeah. his are his gums, you know, are his gums white? Do we is he fo- how much is foaming? Is there blood, you know? And I was like, I don't know. I can't see him. He's in the back of the car. <laughs> Seems quiet. <laughs> but it was a terrible drive. It yeah. was awful. But he was fine. He was. And now he's been fine ever since. He doesn't hop as much. He's not as jumpy. No. he. There's something that's sore. Yeah. Yeah. He but may they have, did a whole bunch of tests and poked and prodded. Yeah. And they did a blood work. Blood they, and, they, they, they prodded him and poked him. And he's not. He doesn't have bloat, which was, could have been a real scary thing. Yeah. Or, and he doesn't have. He didn't get bitten by anything he doesn't have you know a jellyfish mouth he, everything is fine he's yeah. basically fine it was just also probably needed some attention wanted to go to the vet loves the vet <laughs> yeah yeah all right so speaking of guac in the water yes this is, this is the only way we loop hops in here this is also our taste of the keys for this week even though it's sort of in the middle hops is good all right so jr dad gets up before me and on Sunday morning, oh, Sunday morning, yeah. I wake up at like seven thirty, and I'm like, "How's it going, dear dad? Good morning." And he's like, "It's very exciting." <laughs> and, and then my phone goes bing, and I have a text from GR Dad, <laughs> and it's a video of a heckin' manatee swimming in the channel, swimming by right, right past our house, right where Hopper hangs out in the water all the time. Big ass manatee swims past the house yeah in my defense i was downstairs i couldn't like get to you to wake you up and so i just taped i just videoed it's great it. it's great uh this is the first time you've seen but it's a like a whale i mean it's like a small whale they're giant they, they, the nose comes out and breathes like a whale yeah. and the, the the fin makes these circular patterns on the surface of the water because it's like going up and down i mean it's awesome it's yep. really awesome yep uh so all day we're like Well, if the manatee came in, maybe the manatee will also come back. Uh, So we're looking out, looking out, you know. And it's on. I mean, there's other exits. and It's not a total dead end. It would not have to come back this way. It just seemed very optimistic. So we go run some errands. And I'm like, and so it's then mid-afternoon. And I was like, okay, uh, because I can't run because I have this hamstring injury. I'm swimming a lot. I'm going to go for a long swim. So I like get changed. I'm in my swimsuit. You I wet got, yourself down in the shower. Yep, right? yep. Got the earplugs in. Get my mask like anti-fog. Put the mask on my head. I'm walking into the water, and like literally, this is ridiculous. At the moment, I am walking into the water with my snorkel mask and all my swimwear on, ready to swim. 
The manatee comes back. It's un- the, like the whole entire ocean is out there, and the manatee and you intersected in this little speck, tiny speck spot. of ocean. It's a. It is. Ne- it can't. It would like we have to bet money if we're in Vegas or something because it's amazing odds. I had to pull the mask off my face <laughs> to yell, "Ingo, that the was, manatee's back!" That was nice that you did that because yeah, <laughs> I could look out the uh, top story window and I could see it. Yeah. So hops and guac are. In the water at this point. Useless. As the manatee is swimming past, Hops and Guac are in the water. Didn't notice it. Nope. The, this is the only story we have about Hops. Did not notice <laughs> the massive manatee. Yeah. He'll see little, every little freaking crab. She'll see every little crab around her, her paws and every little rock, but doesn't see a manatee that's like six feet long. Oh, it was way longer than six it feet. It seemed real big. It was way longer than six feet. You which, swam with I it. I know because I was like... Hello, friend. And I jumped in the water and I swam about 200 yards with the manatee. Swam right next to the manatee the whole time. I could have hugged it, but that is illegal. I did not hug it. It's so amazing. Uh, Awesome. It was so so awesome. So amazing. I was so pleased that like I hadn't hogged the whole experience, right? Like this is weirdly selfish, but that you got a chance to Uh, see. My my experience was way better. Have the ideal experience with the manatee. I mean, I just jumped in there and I'm like, (laughs) there's the manatee. And it would like dive down to the bottom of the channel. And then it would just like, it's got that big like flipper fin. And it would just like, and it would kind of come back up. And it's little snoop would come out. And I'm just swimming next to it. And I was like, I could hug you. They're kind of like whales. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It was amazing. 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 The most magical thing that has ever happened to me. is just swimming along with this manatee. Because I was like, it could be way faster than me. Like when I was, when the yeah. dolphins were out, um, this is a couple months ago, I went out in the kayak and I kayaked around with the dolphins, but they were much, much faster than me. They're darts. Yeah. And I'm sure this manatee could go faster, but it was just going the same speed as me. And I'm just like, <laughs> and the manatee's like, <laughs> so oh cool. my God, it was amazing. That is so it cool. It was amazing to swim right alongside. I mean, didn't, you know, I wasn't, I did not want to bother the manatee. You don't right. disturb the manatee. So I was a little bit behind, like my head was a little behind its head, which it was longer than me. They don't really have much head. They don't have a neck, I guess. They don't have a neck. <laughs> its face was in front of my face. <laughs> they definitely have a face. Uh, yeah, it was probably 10 feet long, that manatee. It, is, it was quite a bit bigger than I was. It is giant. Yeah, it, it was. Amazing. It is giant. And it's so, like, like for its size, kind of elegant. I mean, they oh, do yeah. a good job, yeah. Amazing. Freaking manatee, man. I Hops can't believe it. Didn't I can't believe it. We I can't believe it. We can't believe it. I can't it. believe that, like, because, I, I mean, if I had been outside and seen it, I would have just, like, stripped my clothes off, jumped in there. If I couldn't get the clothes yeah. off, would have put left the clothes on and jumped in with the manatee. When, when I told you I'd seen a manatee this morning, your first words were, why didn't you jump in and swim with it? I don't why understand didn't you jump still, with actually, why you didn't jump in I and swim I was busy with it. documenting it for you. <laughs> Next time, just go swim with it. Uh, I was wearing clothes. They, you know what? They dry. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Well, maybe next time you will be. Hey, but it all worked out. This is why fate, like, mm-hmm. you know, was okay. It was good. So so that's the taste of the keys. Jen, swimming with a manatee. Amazing. Uh, I have GR Dad's video of the manatee on Jen Runs with Dogs. Mm-hmm. So It's not a great see. video, but it's a, it was a great manatee. Yeah, it was. Um so that's all the dog updates. Yeah. But I did have another item on the list, which is I was up in Maryland this week and two weeks ago, and I'm going up next week because I'm because someday my butt won't hurt, but duty <laughs> is not that day. I'm getting my hamstring treated. You're getting expert medical care. Yep. So I had my second plasma injection today in my hamstring. So I flew up yesterday, and it's cicada time. Oh, unbelievable. They were... Uh, apparently starting to emerge in some places two weeks ago uh and but there i didn't see any or hear any but now they've come out and so i got home yesterday and i was like uh, jared that's very excited for the cicadas so it was raining though so they don't sing a lot in the rain they don't do much um so i went out and i was like well let's just make sure they're out here because they kind of come out depending on the soil temperature so i go out i wonder one of our trees and there's all the little husks of the cicadas on there and so i take a couple pictures for gr dad and i walk back into the house and there's this big old i look over this giant like 
not husk living cicada <laughs> just had apparently crawled onto my shoulder in the like 30 seconds i was under the trees like can i come in and i was like my friend i'm gonna put you back outside yeah and you you were very gentle and very nice yes there are hundreds of them they are on my friend judy was over and she's like i want to see the cicadas she lives in dc so they don't have a lot because they, they crawl out of the ground right so if stuff's paved you don't have any uh and we walk out to the tree. I'm like, there's a bunch on this tree and there's all the husks. She's like, I want to see a live one. I'm like, there's a live one. She's like, I thought we were supposed to be invaded. And I was like, on the next leaf, there's one. Under and every there's leaf. One. And there's one. And she's like, there's like 25 of them, right? In this like one square foot. And she's like, oh yeah, I guess we are kind of invaded. And but they, they were really quiet yesterday. And they scream when it's warm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were kind of warming. Today was a little bit warmer and they, and it was a little cool and drizzly in the morning, but they were getting going. And so it sounds like there's just an alien craft yeah, in the background. Yeah, if you've ever watched a, like a 1950s black and white mm-hmm. science fiction movie, the sound of the UFOs is kind of this, like yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. So your dad might be going up to Maryland to yeah, visit I gotta, I got to find a reason because it's every 17 years, right? So the next time I'll be an old man Yeah. or dead, um, and I can't believe I've made it through two cycles. So yeah. i got to catch this one. This yeah. is like Haley's Comet on the ground. Totes. It is nature at its most extravagant because there are just hundreds of thousands of them and they you know dogs are eating them they they you have to kind of shovel them off your car they they like you know it's just it's just an amazing abundance yep but they don't have mouths they don't eat anything they don't bite you they don't yeah that's right they They just have sex and die they try to have sex and then they sometimes have sex and then they let the females lay eggs and then they die and then 17 years later they come back out. It repeats. It's Can a, you imagine if you're a cicada living underground for 17 years and it's finally time you're t- for you to come out and your patch has been paved over in the last 17 years, you just can't get out of the there's ground. There's so much tragedy that goes on. They're also, the early birds came out and the uh, early yeah. bird cicadas came out and the birds just ate them. Yep. Because if it's just three or four cicadas, the birds are like, yum. Lots of snakes. If it's three or 400,000, the birds are like, oh, I'm so sick of cicada. Oh, can we just let some of them mate and lay eggs? I'm so full. I was wondering today if there's a like statistically significant difference in the survival of like bird and other insect eating populations in the years with the yes there's a bumper crop of birds every 17 years yeah interesting or or you know they lay a ton of eggs after the cicada thing because they're so fat yeah summer so the university of maryland my institution yes um has a big entomology department and uh they put out a cookbook in 2004, <laughs> the last time the cicadas came out, titled Cicada Licious <sighs> Cooking and Enjoying Periodical Cicadas. Um, I'm going to just read you some of the recipe titles. There's a whole thing on how to cook with cicadas. <sighs> Soft shelled cicadas. We start with the appetizers. <sighs> Soft shelled cicadas. This, this one upset me. If, if bugs skis you out, you may want to skip ahead a couple minutes. If Go eating ahead. bugs skis you out, also. So soft-shelled cicadas. It's a cup of Worcestershire sauce, <laughs> 60 freshly emerged 17-year cicadas, oh my four God. eggs, three cups of flour, salt and pepper, and corn oil that's for frying them. What if they're 10-year cicadas? This only is for 17. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here's so the directions. Specific. Ready? Yeah. Marinate the cicadas mm. alive in a sealed container no. in Worcestershire sauce no. for several hours. No. <laughs> what is it? This is not for vegetarians. No. This is terrible. That's, that's all we need to read from that one. Marinate them alive. Just let them crawl around in there. All right. No. Shh. Shh. I'm a vegetarian. I would not do this. Yeah. Shanghai cicadas. Oh, good, Cicada good. dumpling. When? 2004. Were we more racist in 2004? <laughs> okay, go ahead. I, I'm not sure that this is necessarily mm. uh, racist. I, I think a lot of these are takes on like existing recipes for... Dishes. Yeah, like there could be Shanghai crab or something like that's actually from Shanghai. Cicada dumplings, cicada stir fry, Maryland cicadas. It took a while to find the cicadas in this recipe because it's basically a crab boil. So it's a half a cup of Old Bay, salt, four quarts of water, one can of beer, eight red potatoes, two large sweet onions, two pounds of smoked sausage, eight ears of corn. So you boil the Old Bay and all the other stuff and then the potatoes and onions. And then you throw in the sausage and potatoes, and then you add the corn, and I'm like, yes. Oh, and then you add four pounds of large cicadas. There it is, four 
pounds? Because they're going in place of the crab. What is this? Like that's like Maryland's. It's a like potato Maryland. Potato bag. Oh, this is giant. This that's is a, a crab boil, but with four cicadas. Four pounds is a lot. To yeah. get to four pounds of cicadas, those things aren't that heavy. No, no, it's a fuckload. They fly. Yeah. I mean, so this is. Oh. <laughs> It's like four pounds of styrofoam. It's going to be giant. <laughs> it's just how you'd make crabs. They just replaced four pounds of Maryland crabs, blue crabs, with four pounds of cicadas. Ooh. <laughs> Ready? El Chirper tacos. <laughs> tacos. Okay, now desserts. <laughs> there's several pages of desserts. Wait, there's... Uh, El Chirper tacos. Uh, heat butter or oil in a frying pan and fry... Half a pound of newly, newly emerged cicadas for 10 minutes or until cooked through. Like the, the pre-crunchy ones? Is that what I think, you're talking about? Uh, the, I think it's got to be... Crunchy. The, no, no, no. After, maybe after they... Well, yeah. They, they mean the brown ones before they molt. That would be freshly emerged right as they crawl out of the ground. Throw them in there. Mm. You ate those grasshopper tacos. They were crunchy. Tastes like exoskeleton. I didn't have a relationship with the grasshopper. <laughs> Anyway, you fry those cicadas and then it's like serrano chilies, tomato, onion, cumin, taco seasoning mix. So it's a real authentic Mexican dish. <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, dessert. Chocolate covered cicadas. The recipe is just 30 dry roasted cicadas and eight squares of good semi-sweet chocolate. So you can... It says roast teneral cicadas. What is teneral? Teneral? Of or relating to or constituting a state of the imago of an insect immediately after molting. Oh, okay. Soft. Fresh, like cr the white, the white the big nymphs. bodies after. No, no, no. The nymphs are the brown things that crawl out of the ground. Oh. And then when the adults crawl out of the nymph shells, but grab before those. they it's harden. It's like a soft shell white, crab. Yeah. Which is also kind of an abomination. So you grab those cicadas <sighs> right after they molt, but before they can harden up. Oh, and Pete's then you sake. dry roast them. Uh, you roast them for 15 minutes at 225. That's a dry roasted cicada. And then heat your chocolate in a double boil. Dip the insects in chocolate. Paste, place on waxed paper and refrigerate until hardened. Cicada rhubarb pie. I'm surprised someone went to all this trouble and and probably tested these recipes. Probably was like, you know sitting next to a tree waiting for cicadas to emerge from their shell and out of the ground and oh, be yeah. like, well, that's one pound. <laughs> Four cups of char chopped rhubarb and one cup of fresh cicadas washed and any hard parts removed. That's all of them. That's a lot of it. Oh. Fresh cicadas. Chocolate chip trillers. These look like cookies with... Half a cup of dry roasted chopped cicadas. They apparently go in place of the walnuts. That's great. Much walnut That's you put in. great. Banana cicada bread. <sighs> also a quarter cup of dry roasted cicadas in there. You can find this on my Twitter feed, the, my professional Jen Goldbeck Twitter feed. I am a vegetarian, and sometimes it pays off a lot, and this is one of those times. One yeah, those this times. just seems like um, let nature run its course <clears throat> and let the birds eat it and dogs and Ugh. whatever else eats them. There you go. Uh, I will not be eating any cicadas. I won't kill any of them. And for the record, Look. I didn't like the grasshoppers that much. No, you didn't. No. Too chitinous. <laughs> we, uh, we are, speaking of cookbooks, Jared Ad and I were brainstorming ideas and have talked about a cocktail of the week cookbook. It would be cicada-free. Yes. Yeah. So That's that, right. That could be a thing. It might have dogs in it, but not as recipe dog ingredients. Cocktails. Not as ingredients, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. consumers, as uh, judges. Judges. I don't think we'd let them drink the no, cocktails. Judges. They can watch. They can look the aesthetically. Judge the aesthetics. You got a German word of the week? Yeah, I think we said Hüftgold. Hüft, Hüftgold. Which is like you know, getting a little bit. Uh, 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 Hüfte is hips. Hü yep. uh, your hip and Gold is gold. Yeah. But it sort of describes sort of, you know, a little getting a little round around the hips. Yeah. Uh, w I read it in the context of quarantine weight gain. Well, Everybody's got a little hoofed yeah, gold. Well, people have found some hoofed gold. Yeah. <laughs> some, just mined some hoofed gold. But it does, from the page that I read, and you can tell me if this is wrong, it does sound slightly derogatory. 
Yeah. I mean, like not terrible, but sort of like, like spare tire, right? Y- it's not like... Yeah. I mean, it's a little more positive than that, but it's still... You're still commenting on someone having gained weight around their hip. So mm-hmm. it's... Yeah, I think it's hard to completely praise someone for that. <laughs> hey, look at you. You gained some weight, you know? I, I don't know. <laughs> it could happen in some cultures and some, some circumstances, I guess, but it's uh, generally not a, you know, great thing. It's just like a... It's the best possible spin to put on it i think yeah yeah well there you go all right jude this has been an action-packed did you work through your long list we've covered everything on the list that's fantastic thank you despite my best efforts to the contrary (laughs) to derail me Uh, i thought we were going to run out of tape no we can go forever flip the cassette and just start (laughs) taping on the other side i don't understand how this is so hard well, I'll, I'll keep that in mind if we ever go that long. If we ever remember what a cassette was. Um, all right. Well, until next week. Don't get, bite anyone. Unless they ask you to. And also get vaccinated. Don't eat everything like voodoo either. That's Just a, it's not good advice. everything needs to be chomped. I think it kind of follows from the don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. <sighs> Nobody, at, nothing asks him to be bitten. Mm-mm. Except for guacamole. Guacaman and he have a thing. They're they're good siblings that way. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Yep. But, but when he eats he's a asked tin, to. tin can, I mean, he doesn't ask for permission. Nope. He's not a good permission example. is denied. He's not a good example. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.